Hello, um, it is Desmios here with another video, and I wanted to make a video today because, um, I've seen something pretty interesting, um, today, and I like to call it, um, the oxymoron of Christianity, um, because I figured that it's kind of an oxymoron, um, because when I, and, and which means it's, it's something ironic. It's something that's like, kind of like, what? Um, and there's probably a better definition for the word oxymoron, but it's the best one that I could come up with right now. Um, but it's like, it seems opposite, but it makes sense. That's basically what it means. Um, and I was basically just praying last night. I prayed to God and I said, make it change how I live, basically. I, I want this time with you, you know, this kind of time around. I want it, I really want to feel you this time. Um, I really want to know you. And I prayed for that. And then um, today, I started to feel it a bit. Um, I was at work and my mind was kind of the beginning of a battle. It wasn't too crazy, but I started to think more about how I could love God in the workplace, um, how I could love him with what I'm doing. Um, and I started to think about just the difficulties that I was experiencing. Like today, my dog, uh, my new dog, he got, he started biting me a lot and I was getting really, really angry. Um, because, and I just kept kind of pushing him away. And then finally I like pushed him really hard and he's three months old, so that really wasn't good. And it's just not good to push a dog either way. Um, and so I was just getting really angry. And I saw that I was kind of getting impatient a bit. And I was like, where is this coming from? And it's the whole thing about living for Christ. It's going to change how you live, how you respond to anger how you respond to all of that. Because when you're in the world, I mean, let's just read Psalm 73. Just read it. You know, it says, um, my foot had almost slipped because I saw the way of the world. It looked so successful, so wonderful, so great. Um, and everybody was healthy and you know, no struggles anywhere. And the only struggles that there were were just simple, petty, privileged struggles in the world. You know, like everyone else in America, um, and, but then he said, and I thought that all of this was in vain. I thought my, that my relationship with Christ was all in vain, but then I stepped into the presence of God. Then I stepped into the house of the Lord and I realized why I was doing this because it's for his sake, you know, it's for living for Christ. And, and, uh, and then Last night I prayed that uh, this would change the way I live, and I'm obviously seeing that now. I just listened to a few Christian songs while I was on the floor, um, and I was just kind of thinking a bit. And so um, I just kind of laid there, and I thought, and I listened to this one song called If by Utif Beautiful Eulogy, and it's really good. Um, because it talks about something really, um, this is awesome. You know, it's, it's talking about how I'd still consider it gain if you took away my kids and my life and put an end to my life and, and took away my ministry, my passion, my influence, my reputation. And I mean, it just went through everything that God could take away. And he said, you know, I'd consider it good. I'd consider it gain if God took it away. And same thing with here. It's like, sometimes we think that when we come to Christ, all it's going to be is pretty roses, thoughts of heaven, um, beautiful communion with Christ, emotional connection with the Father. But usually, commonly, it's not that way. One, you know, if we were just crying all the time and being emotional all the time with Christ, then... I mean, we, we'd just get up in the morning and start reading the word. We'd see him as the best thing. But sometimes if we're going to make a change to our life, we have to make the decision ourselves 
to be responsible with self-discipline as Christians. And when you're in the world, none of that matters. You don't have maturity. You don't have imagination. Um, you don't have any self-discipline. You, you don't have any of that because your mind is always on yourself. And a lot of people in the world don't really have anxiety. And I know that there's some worldly anxiety about, oh, I have social anxiety and I'm an introvert. And that's okay. You know, Christians along with people of the world have that. But I'm talking about the real struggle of what it means to be tested and trained by Christ. That is totally different. Because you actually have to think about, oh, I'm, I really want to talk to that person. I really want to love them, you know. And you actually start thinking about that rather than, um, you know, the other stuff. But, yeah. Um, so, uh, don't give up, guys. If, if this video related to you at all, you know, I really just, you know, I just really pray um, that this honestly goes out to someone who needs to hear this right now that when we're living for christ we're honestly going to be tested not just in things that are like christian persecution and being scared if i should talk to that person or not about christ but rather it's um it's not really that as much as it is being trained with patience and humility and um love like that you know actually deciding to love a person actually fighting to decide what should I say to them or or stuff like that you know um and it really does mature you it really trains you for God's will and if you think it's too hard then uh, don't give up guys honestly um we don't wake up with the same feeling every morning you know usually I thought that the mark of a Christian was how emotional they were with Christ there are some weeks where I might be super emotional, I might be on cloud nine, I might be super in love with Christ, just crying to every song about how beautiful he is, all for his glory, just amazing, and there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm reading this book right now called Jesus is for Liars, check it out by Tim Baker, um, super good book, and what it talks about basically is my relationship with Christ is my own, it's genuinely mine, and if it's going to be mine, it has to be genuine because I can't be jealous of my brother in Christ over here who who he might just be coming to Christ and he might be super emotional and in love with God and just crying and just doing everything for his will. But there are some weeks, months, moments, seasons in your life where um, <laughs> in the words of Elevation Church, I'm going through a rough season right now. Um, and that's I mean, it's biblical, like. It's going to be different seasons in every different Christian's life. There's not one specific path to be down. It's it's all on God's path. Um, and I like to use the example from Psalms 84, I think, um, with the Valley of Baca. If God says to go down the Valley of Baca, then we're going to turn it into streams. We're going to turn it into rivers of beautiful flowing water. And that wouldn't have happened if he didn't send us into the valley first to figure out if this is going to be this beautiful, wonderful river of beautiful, flowing crystal water. Um, and so, like right now in the morning, I'm having to literally push myself to decide to read the Bible. Don't follow the instincts of your flesh. Um, I was just reading Jeremiah last night, and it said... You know, the man who follows his own will is just like the sand, just going wherever it is, you know, there's no order, it's just all chaos um, with sand, you know, it goes wherever it wants, you know, same with water, same with men, people, um, you know, just following our own flesh um, in the spiritual realm, it's, it's just chaos, you know, it says that in James too, um, you can't trust them, you know, um, it's like, you know, they're, they're like, what is it? He looks into himself in the mirror, and the next time he does, he, he doesn't recognize himself. Um, and, you know, and that's why it says that God does not work like the shifting shadows. But anyways, I was trying to make a point um, that right now, fight to read the word. Don't follow the instincts that say, oh, well, I'm just not feeling it this morning, man. Um, you know, just not feeling it. Um, I think I'm going to go 
on my phone or YouTube or whatever. And I have done that for every morning for a, the past few months. Um, and that's really, really not good. And it, it was just, it was empty. Um, it started to become really empty in my life. And I realized that, man, I just need the Lord. <laughs> I just need to be with God. And it wasn't this feeling that was like this incredible emotional feeling that might happen, but man, we have to be faithful. Um, we really do. And so, yeah, that was uh, my video for today. Um, you know, just please enjoy, subscribe if you want, not a huge deal. Um, but yeah, well, thank you guys. Um, just keep being faithful, honestly. Like, read the Bible on what faith looks like. I think Second Corinthians 14, maybe? I don't know. It says, imitate the faith of those before. Um, so read Hebrews 11, too, or Hebrews 10, and talks about the people of faith and just how they lived. Um, but don't make it so much about how they lived, um, but make it about being in sync with God, not being in sync with past people of the Bible. Like, um, and this video is totally scrambled, but um, what it's talking about is when David was with Goliath, that was not an example for us that we have giants that we need to conquer. David killed a human being with a stone. That was all a miracle. <laughs> that was all. And, and yes, he was a shepherd boy, so he knew how to do it. He'd killed a lion and a bear beforehand. He was a literal... Goliath was a literal trained warrior that had killed thousands of guys. That story is not at all about you conquering your giants. Where in the Bible does it say that you can even do that? Take Jesus out of the picture. Take God out of the picture. Take the whole triune God out of the picture. You yourself, can you defeat a giant? No, you can't. Can you defeat a figurative giant? No, you cannot. You just can't. Okay? Um, everything in the Bible from the beginning, every story of David everything, every prophecy about, you know, whatever, Russia and China and America, their big world war, like, whatever it is in the Bible, all comes back to Christ. Every single thing. It's not about you conquering your giants, okay? <laughs> the story of um, Jesus walking on water isn't something about you. It's about Jesus. What Watchman Nee said, um, great Christian man, what he said was, it's not that Jesus would just do something through you. It's that he would empty you out so that you would be a hollow vessel so that he may fill you with himself. Not, none of you, you can't do this. It's just your submission to him. That's what he requires, right? Your repentance and your submission. Um, so I am not like i i kind of want to make my videos shorter um just for the sake of um i don't know trying to get more people onto the channel and stuff so i can have a bigger platform but honestly this is jesus speaking through me right now and so if he wants the video to be 14 minutes long like it is right now then so be it but anyways uh love you guys thank you so much worthy is the lamb and uh, do everything for the glory of God. Goodbye.